thank you tonight's um first explicit movement um young adult zoom thanks for coming glad you're here um tonight's topic is sacred sexual and shame free my journey from bondage to purpose this is part one of two so we're going to do another um half of it next week um so feel free to join us next week as well um tonight we have michelle okimura director of explicit movement and special guest pastor rob gross from mountain view community church um and so throughout the time together on zoom feel free to ask your questions um you can send a, a private chat to me my name is john allison i'll be up in the right in the participants box so feel free to to private message me any questions that you have and i'll pass that along um, to Michelle, and we'll do our best to get to your questions um, tonight. Um, and then later on, we'll be posting the audio recording of tonight's event to a private YouTube page. Um, so you can either email uh, Michelle at Michelle at explicitmovement.org, or you can send your email to me um, via the chat, private chat, and we will get that link to you um, later. So I'm going to turn it over to Michelle. Take it away. Oh, thank you, John. Well, welcome, everybody. We're so excited that you made time and to join us tonight. Um, for those of you that are newcomers, just a little bit about our heart at Explicit Movement is we really want, have a heart to engage young adults, uh, parents, really everyone, but especially tonight, young adults um, to in, in, in topics of sexuality and walking in sexual integrity for the purpose of really wanting to see you step into healthy, thriving relationships, you know, and God's design and and his blessing. And so uh, we are really, really blessed tonight to have Pastor Rob Gross of Mountain View Community Church. And he has been such a, gosh, a dear, dear friend for several years. Um, he and his wife, Barbara, and my husband, and Rob and I, we just, I, we just love this couple and this family and this church family. They've done so much for the body of Christ uh, locally, globally, and just bringing healing and restoration and encouragement to the body of Christ everywhere and um, including my life too. I've experienced so much encouragement and healing to um, Pastor Rob's ministry, Healing Hearts and, and his many teachings and um, different things that he does. And so um, without further ado, Pastor Rob, I want to just welcome you and we just love you here at Explicit Movement. You've been with us from the beginning <laughs> and we so love and appreciate everything that you do and especially for who you are and so um we just want to just invite you to share your heart with us and um welcome so pastor rob <laughs> well thank you michelle it's it's great to be here tonight and golly i i used to be a young person um 45 years ago <laughs> 50 years ago so here here i am speaking to young people and um what a privilege because that's when it all begins, you know, that, that's when God begins to really intersect with your life and show you destiny and purpose. And so tonight I'd like to share with you some things. And I'd like to just, just say as I start off that um, I'm not really nervous about it, but I've, I've always, I've never really shared what I'm about to share with you. I mean, in, in as much detail as I'm going to share tonight. And one of the reasons why is because a lot of, the, a lot of it's graphic. And then, you know, being a human being sometimes, um, there's a level, not so much of shame, because God removed all shame from me, and I'll be sharing about that, and there's no guilt either, but, you know, there's always the thought in the back of your mind, will what I share in any way stain your reputation, or make people think differently of you, or if they see you, will they um, act differently, or think, you know, you know, I don't know about that guy, and see, this is one of the things that when we get entangled with sexual stuff, there's a lot of these thoughts in the back of our head, in our heart. We don't want to come out and share it because we're afraid of what people will think of us. And so I just felt, um, as I was sharing about my journey with my wife and how God had, uh, you know, shown me that he took me through all this junk in my life and then turned it around on the enemy. And today I'm doing exactly what the enemy did to me, but I'm reversing the, the curse and where the enemy attacked me sexually, I'm helping people. Not That's not all we do, but one of the primary areas that we address is the sexual area. And I got really defiled by the enemy. And um, I'm just amazed that, that God has done this for me. And I just uh, want to start off by saying, there's hope for you if you're entangled with sexual sin. Because if God could help me break free, he can help you break free as well. If God can turn my life around, he can turn your life around as well. 
So, so let's get started. I'll just say a really quick prayer. Lord Jesus, I pray that right now you would open every heart and every ear right now, that you would open the eyes of our hearts to see your love and compassion as, a, as an amazing father that you are. And that, Lord, you, you would help people to see that if they're entangled with sexual sin in any way, that, Lord, you can break free in their life. You can overcome their shame, their guilt. And, Lord, you can actually put them on a path of destiny and purpose where their lives can count for you, that it's not too late. And that, Lord Jesus, you love to, to bless, 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 even when we're in the deepest pit. So I thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. So the enemy had his, his sights on me from a very early age. I don't understand why he came after me. I, you know, I, I don't, I, I've often thought, you know, how does the enemy know uh, the destiny and purpose on, a purpose on a person's life? But as I look at what God has me doing today, for some reason, for the life of me, I don't know how he knew, but he tried to defile me so that I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but um, I don't understand why he came at me, but he surely did. And it all began back in kindergarten. I was at University Elementary Lab School next to University of Hawaii. My mom was a professor in the School of Nursing for 40 years. And so she had me going to the elementary school nearby. And then close by to the school was a babysitter. And so I'd go through the men's gym, you know, through the back. Uh, it was real close to the kindergarten. And I would go there every day. And I remember, um, I think she's passed away now. Auntie Vicky was taking care of me in this large house along with all these other kids. And I remember uh, one of the older kids had me as well as some other children that were there all take down our pants and reveal ourselves to her, expose ourselves to her. And so that was probably the first time that I was ever, uh, you know, slimed by the enemy. And you know, when you're, when you're that age, you're innocent, you don't think anything of it. Uh, not a big deal, right? But that was the first time. So then in the first grade, I remember being in recess out in this large field. Uh, there weren't any teachers around, if, or if they were around, they were on the perimeter of the field. And this seventh or eighth grade boy, real big kid, big local kid, came up to me and he started showing all the kids these graphic pornographic pictures. And what was really crazy about it is they were pictures of his twin sisters who were much older than he was. And then he started to brag about how he was having sex with him. Now, I got to tell you, this, this is not just your, uh, this is not like Playboy or Penthouse. This, this was graphic stuff. And this was the first time my eyes were exposed to such stuff. And, you know, you get defiled. I mean, the enemy is literally sliming you with darkness. And you don't even know what he's doing to you. But it was almost like a, a you know, grooming me so to speak, very slowly at different times through different individuals who are coming to get me to a place where I would be addicted for eight years, from age 12 or 13 to uh, when I was, um, well, actually age 13 to 25. So I, I was um, addicted porn to porn for a long, long time. So, um, so then around the seventh or eighth grade, around that same time, there was this teenage boy who lived across the street from where we lived. And I was out on the street one night and he began to expose his genitals to me. And for some reason, I was drawn to that. You see the process of grooming was setting in and, and the enemy was taking me to the next level of his you know, junk that he was spewing out on me. And he would expose himself to me regularly and I'd watch him. And so as a result of that, I, I believe the enemy opened me up to the spirit of exposure. In other words, you know, someone exposing themselves. That was a spirit on him. And so, unbelievably, I started to do that with this, uh, expose myself to a girl who lived on our street. She was a little bit older than me, and she was doing the same back to me. And, you know, when you're kids, you're not really thinking that's a big old deal, but it was, big, you know, the whole assignment from the enemy on my life was beginning to deepen at a pretty rapid pace. So that, that's what was happening. And so then um, I, I was attending, and Lisa knows this, uh, Iolani School. I'm an alumni there, graduated in 1977. And so in the seventh or eighth grade, I'm not sure which grade level it was, um, pornography, Lisa, began to circulate like crazy. 
uh, the actual magazines. And so what we would all do is we back way back in the day, and probably any of you who are millennials cannot relate to this at all, but we had these folders called peachy folders. I don't know if you remember the peachy folders, Michelle. And so, you know, you, you had guys walking around campus with pornography right there in their peachy folders going to class left and right or carrying it in our bags. And teachers never knew. I don't think they knew that that kind of thing was an issue or maybe they did and I didn't know if they did. But anyway, uh, I then learned from my best friend that he had been going to a mom and pop store right next to Varsity Theater. Now for you millennials who don't know what Varsity Theater is, it's a very popular theater, theater way back in the day on University Avenue uh, across from what is called Pucks Alley today. And so I would go to this store, it was owned and operated by this sweet grandma Chinese lady and you know, I would buy porn regularly. And you know, I'd always feel a sense of shame going in there because you know, she'd always say, you lucky girl, you know? And I would, I would, you know, when I was buying it and, and I always felt so ashamed, but I was hooked and I was addicted. And I just want to say to um, any of you who are listening tonight, if porn is an issue for you, I understand, I clearly understand the addictive, powerful, powerfully addictive nature of pornography. It is a drug. It is, you, you just want more of it. And, and it, it just, it really affects you. Now, as a pastor, I have also ministered to women addicted to Playgirl. And so it's not just the male thing, but I think it's more predominant with men than it is with women for sure. So anyway, um, that was going on for quite a while. And um, so this lasted, you know, till I was 25 when I became a Christian. And so I, what I wanted to do, I was just, tell, you know, wanted to share with you the what of how I got hooked in. And so if you have any questions, mail them in and maybe we can answer those questions um, after I'm done. But what I wanted to share next is what were the consequences of my addiction you know what were, you know because when you're the age i was you're not even thinking about consequences you're not a think you're not thinking about how it might affect you or someone else or you don't even have a clue that the enemy is involved in the process but i just want to share with you tonight that there are definite consequences to being addicted to pornography so the first one is something that um, until the Lord broke through and helped me overcome it, I was ashamed of for years. And that was, I hurt a little girl and her family. They were, um, they lived here in, in our city. Um, my parents got to know their parents. I was, you know, a pretty trustworthy kid. And so I was asked in the seventh or eighth grade, I don't remember exactly what year, to start babysitting their third or fourth grade daughter. And so one of the consequences of being hooked by pornography is you have the spirit of lust and you, you, you know, and, and, and I think along with that came the spirit of molestation or inappropriate touch. Usually when I minister to people today, I always talk about having been touched inappropriately. It's a little bit less, you know, sharp than the word um, molestation. But anyway, I started to molest her, let's call it what it was. And um, it didn't happen a tremendous amount of times, but enough times. And I never had any thought whatsoever how my actions were affecting this little girl and how they might affect her long term and how they might affect her parents in any way, shape or form. So one day I was at a Kolal ballroom at a Christian conference. I had, you know, this girl, who is now obviously a woman, was not on my radar screen. And lo and behold, the Lord begins the process of starting to move in my life. Because you see, the Lord wants to close every door of darkness in our lives. Because when he starts to close the doors, he can then get you on your purpose and destiny. Destiny. Because when you, you open yourself up to darkness, if he gives you your purpose and destiny prematurely, the enemy has hooks in you and can pull you off that pathway. And destroy your ministry or destroy your purpose or your marketplace impact or whatever it might be or your marriage. And so to give you what God wants to give you, he wants to close every door. 
And so I did not realize that the Lord began, you know, that he was moving in my life. And so he sends her to this conference. I believe this without a shadow of a doubt. He sends her to this conference. She happens to bump into me and she walks up to me and she says to me, do you rem remember who I am? And of course she looked a lot different, but I was like uh, horrified, like, oh my gosh, yes, I remember who you are. And I was so nervous, so taken aback, so unprepared because I could see very, it was very clear that she wanted to talk, but I was not ready to talk yet. And so I made some excuse and I was out of there. I mean, I avoided her for the rest of the conference. If not, went home. I don't remember exactly, but I was out of there. And so when I got home, the Lord began to really speak to me and say, you know, I'm trying to close the door, this door in your life. And I, I remember, um, I recalled at that time that I'd actually prayed a prayer, Lord, please close every door. Be careful if you ever pray that prayer, folks. And I, I just, <clears throat> I wanted to make sure that I was just clean before God and every dimension of my life, every area. And so he sent her, he answered the prayer and I forgot I had prayed that prayer. You know, sometimes when you pray, you don't, you don't realize that God is answering your prayer till later. So anyway, I started to pray, okay, God, I blew that first one, you know, that first encounter with her. Um, we didn't exchange phone numbers. I don't know if she knows that I'm, I'm a pastor. I don't know if she knows the church that I pastor would you please supernaturally move in her life and get her my phone number and have her call me because I would like to, I would like to talk and allow her to share with me what I did. You know, I, I wanted her to be able to, to confront me and to share with me what she needed to say. And I think this is really important for people's healing that if you have been violated, if you have been molested, if you have been raped, if you have been victimized in some way, that oftentimes the key to your healing is, to be able to, to talk to the person who did that so that there can be some level of reconciliation. So anyway, she calls. She got out of the blue pretty quickly after I prayed that prayer, she calls. And I, I'm, I'm like, okay, God, here we, you know, here we go. And so I gave her every opportunity to vent and to tell me how I impacted and affected her life. And then of course I, I apologized profusely for my, my part in the whole matter and seems like she was satisfied you know i mean it, it, there was forgiveness and i thank god for that but i tell you something god wasn't god wasn't done because she went home and she told her dad who i can't tell you what he was doing but he was way up there in his profession i mean one of the highest levels you know I mean, he was big time and he was in his 70s and he calls me on the phone so of course she had given him my number. She calls me on the telephone. He calls me rather and says, I would like to meet. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. I'm gonna be meeting with the father of the little girl that I molested. And let me tell you, I was super nervous. So I shared the whole ordeal with my wife, Barbara. I wanted to get everything out in the open. I, I contacted our associate, um, pastor in our church and said please be praying for me and i shared everything with him and you know this is one of the keys to healing the bible says in john 5 16 therefore confess your sins to one another so that you may be healed and confession means to agree with what you've done to see it the way god sees it and so anyway i did that and i met with him and i was so nervous and he's sitting you know like there was no social distancing you know he was right there right you know like two feet away and I, it took everything from the Holy Spirit to get me to look him in the eye and to say, you know, to just look him in the eye as he told me what, what he felt about what I did to his daughter. And, 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 you know, and I look back on that, it was such a scary thing for me, but it was so necessary to close the door to, the, to darkness and to that chapter of my life. And then you know what he said to me? He said, I take partial, partial responsibility. And I'm thinking, what? He said, yeah, um, all my life, my, my male adult life, I've been addicted to pornography. And so I feel some sense of, he's a believer, some sense of responsibility that I opened the door to my daughter. And um, 
so anyway, that's the last time I saw him. That's the last time I saw her. But that's the first consequence, is that you hurt the heart of God. You hurt yourself, right? And you also hurt others. I hurt a family that had put their trust in me, and I betrayed that trust. And so um, that, was, that was a heavy-duty breakthrough that God orchestrated in my life. And I'm so grateful to him. So let me look at my notes here because there's a lot here. Um, so I do want to say that what is your peace of mind worth? If you're, you're a young person and you're struggling with porn, what, what is, what is having, not having shame worth to you? Right? I, I would pay big dollars, big bucks to have that weight lifted off my shoulders. Let me tell you, when her dad left my church office, he came to my church office. <laughs> you know, here I am, a senior pastor of a church, and I felt like a little boy. You know, but when he left my office, I felt this enormous weight, this enormous burden lift off of my life, off, off of my soul. And so what is that worth to you if you're struggling today with pornography or you've done, you've done or doing rather what, what I did to that little girl? Because porn opens the door to other issues. It's not just looking at naked bodies. There's more to it than that. And that's where I wanted to go next. And that's the second consequence is that you will open yourself up to darkness. And whether, you know, you have the theological background to agree with this or not, I certainly didn't as a Southern Baptist. I only knew the word. I didn't know the spirit side. And I, I had no idea that, you know, what Jesus did in the Gospels where he was dealing with spiritual entities and telling them to leave people actually existed today or, were, or they were real. And so when I delved into porn, was addicted for, you know, those 13 years or so, my soul was open to spiritual entities from the dark realm. And I had no clue. And so, as I just said, one, the enemy wants to take you out. So looking at nude pictures of women led to another issue, and that was uh, sex before marriage. And because now, you know, you're, you're sexually charged. And so I'm doing this with my girlfriend and we got pregnant. We got pregnant and we, we decided to have an abortion. And I, and I got to tell you, to this day, that is without a doubt, the greatest regret of my life. I have three wonderful sons that I love dearly. Two of them are married. One of them has a steady girlfriend. They're great sons, great boys. Um, I have three grandchildren, two girls and a boy, and another grandchild on the way. Um, I think the end of August, um, a grandson will be born. And I love, I love my family. I love my children with all my heart. And I, I've told the Lord over and over that one day when I'm in heaven, I would like to meet you know, the child that my girlfriend and I at that time aborted. You know, I would like to meet that boy or girl. God, would you do that for me? You know, and, and you can see even to this day, I, re I have regret. And, you know, when you open yourself up to darkness, there's regret. There's not only shame and a lack of peace of mind, there's regret. But then you're, you're hooked into this realm. You know, you, you, um, you're, you're like entrapped. And so... Um, I just want to share with you a little bit about my journey out of that. Uh, I remember going to the Wisteria, you know, all you millennials won't even know the Wisteria restaurant on King Street, but um, it was a popular place and two pastors took me out to lunch. And so I went to use the restroom and one pastor says to the other pastor, he has a lot of spirits in him, doesn't he? They told me this later. And, you know, so I came back and what, uh, the other pastor said to me, I would like to show you my, my church facility. And I'm thinking, what an odd thing. You know, we're having lunch here. You want to show me your church facility? So I, I went along with it. I said, okay. So we went over to Kalihi to where his church facility was. And he's showing me around. And it's about quarter of four. It's Friday afternoon. There's, I know there's going to be heavy traffic back to Kaneohe. And I say, I need to leave. And right as I said, I need to leave where I'm going. I started to cough violently. 
And the other pastor says, Rob, you can't leave. And I said, I have to, be, I have to, um, I have to leave. I want to beat traffic. And then I think I'm coming down with a cold because I'm really coughing violently right now. And he said, no, 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 Rob, you can't leave. We need to pray for you. And I said, no, I need to leave. No, you need to stay. So they sat me down. They insisted. And so they're, they're, they're standing behind me and their hands are laid on me. And one pastor whispers to the other pastor, he has sexual spirits. And I got to tell you, I had, this is when I was in my early 40s. I had, I had not dealt with porn since becoming a Christian when I was 25. I was, you know, I was over it. I had walked the line. I had read the word. I was, I was diligent to protect my eyes. And I was offended. I was like, how dare you say that I have sexual spirits? I'm a pastor. <laughs> I'm a Baptist pastor. <laughs> you know, I, how dare you? You know, and, and so anyway, they started calling it out of me. And I started to cough violently for the next half hour, you guys. And I was so shocked when it was over. And I'm driving home. I was, how is that possible? How is it possible for a believer to have evil inside of him? And I began to understand later on that there's a, there's a difference between your spirit, where the Holy Spirit lives and resides, and your soul. Because the Bible says in Philippians 1.6, Paul said, For I'm confident of this very thing, that until the day returns, I'm going to you know, clean you up. I'm going to sanctify you. I'm paraphrasing there. Okay? And so... I learned that the soul, your mind, your thoughts, your will, your capacity to make choices, and your emotions could actually get hooked with evil. And the spirit lives with the spirit, but the spirit, once the spirit comes in, the Holy Spirit comes into your spirit, the Holy Spirit begins to transform over time. If you're willing, that's a key word, willingness, your soul. And God, is, you know, God knew all this stuff was in me, and I was serving him, and he didn't condemn me. You know, he just loves us, loves you. So I settled that issue. And I just want to say to each of you who are listening tonight that the spiritual realm is very, very real. And um, it's, it's literally allowing darkness to come into you. So if you have any questions about that, please write them down or send them in to Elisa. That'd be wonderful. So the third consequence is... And I just want to say to all of you young people, I know when I was your age, I really wanted A, a girlfriend, and B, I wanted to get married. I think all of us want to get married, don't we? I mean, some don't, but I think most people would like to get married and have companionship you know, for most of their life. And all I, gotta say, all I want to say to you is having ministered to countless numbers of people with sexual issues, when you open yourself up to darkness, Parts of you scatter or shatter and go into this place that I call the ungodly lake. So let me break this down scripturally for you. In Ephesians 3.18, we are taught by the Apostle Paul that there are four dimensions of God's love. The, the height, the width, the length, and the depth. So let me break these down, and I want to focus lastly on the length. So the height is where you rule and reign. Makes sense, right? High. It's where God's love puts you on a platform of purpose and destiny. It's where you begin to impact other people's lives. And so a lot of times when your parts through trauma are scattered and are stuck in ungodly height, which is the opposite of ruling and reigning, but a place of being capped, a place of not being able to move into your, your, your destiny or your purpose, you, you really struggle, right? So trauma scatters our parts to these bad places. So the ungodly width is the place or dimension of trust. And so when we're trusting God, we're leaning not on our own understanding, but we're acknowledging him, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, in all ways, and we stay on a pathway, it says. He will make straight your paths. And the pathway is that place where destiny resides. Because if you stay on the path that God wants for you, you're, he's going to lead you into what he, what he has reserved for you. So when you don't trust God through because of a broken relationship or molestation or some kind of trauma, and you're no longer trusting the Father, you're not going to be able to reside in the, ungod, in the godly width. The godly width is a realm of, of, of love, of, of 
faith, hope, and love. Right? So when we trust God, we have faith, we have hope, and we have love. When we don't trust God because parts of us are stuck in the ungodly wood, we have unbelief, we begin to move into hopelessness, and we get angry, and we experience hatred. So then there's the ungodly depth. Uh, there's the godly depth. I don't know if any of you have ever been on a, on a boat cruise or out on the ocean on a motorboat, but the ocean is so vast. And the depth of God's righteous love is vast. It surrounds you. It's deep. It's high. It's all around you. It's a wonderful. It's amazing. When you're in the ungodly depth, it's because you've been traumatized and you're pounded with anguish and guilt and torment. I really believe uh, soldiers who come back from war situations suffer from PTSD. It's really they're stuck. Parts of them are stuck in the ungodly death. And, and, but when you're traumatized sexually, you could, parts of you could be in the ungodly death. So if you want to read about the ungodly death, there's so many scriptures that I could get to you guys. It, it's, it's crazy. So the ungodly length we have discovered is that dimension of God's love that's reserved for marital intimacy. And so you're able to connect heart to heart. And I'm going to have Elisa uh, bring up a picture right now of, of the heart, two hearts, to show all of you. So you can see there two hearts. Isn't that a wonderful picture? <laughs> so you have two people who've been hooking up with other people before they just hooked up. So they've had multiple hookups and possibly they've even been intertwined with pornography. When you are delving in pornography, you are connected to another realm. You are connected to the ungodly link. And the ungodly link is a place of loneliness. It's the exact opposite of intimacy. Intimacy occurs when your heart is connected with another person's heart at a very deep level through sexual intercourse. It's reserved for marriage. So when you go outside of marriage and delve into porn or whatever kind of sexual thing outside of marriage it is, your heart will get connected to that bad place. And so now you're not able to really connect with your eventual spouse. And I really believe with all my heart that this is the reason why married couples often struggle to connect and have marital issues. And so, you know, when we, when we counsel people, counsel young people before they get married, we don't do a lot of, um, you know, the, they can go to the marriage conference out of Turtle Bay if they want to. We, we try to clean up their heart and their sexual past because we know that if their heart has been connected to another person's heart, there are all these yucky connections that are going to prevent them from experiencing the godly link, which is deep, deep intimacy. And so, Elisa, if you could show the other picture of the hands, we'll do that. I'm doing that a little bit early, but I think it's appropriate to show it right now. So, you know, each time you sleep with someone, you also sleep with their past. And you can see that unbelievable picture there. And, but we don't realize that. And I think the same thing occurs when you do porn, is you connect yourself to pornography, that realm. And so I want to encourage you to um, you know, have soul ties broken and shattered with, with those that you've possibly slept with because this is a consequence of doing this. And, and so God, God's not a killjoy. God, you know, sex is a gift from God. It's amazing. It's wonderful. But it's reserved for marriage. And when we do it outside of marriage, we get connected to the ungodly length as well as to other people's souls. So anyway, enough for that. And so uh, thank you for showing that, Lisa. So I just, as I close tonight, because I have um, about 11 minutes left before we want to open up for questions, uh, I want to encourage you that God has a plan and purpose for your life. I, from the bottom of my heart, uh, that no matter how deeply you're hooked today in porn, um, or whether you've been molested or raped or victimized in some manner, God loves you. Don't give up on God. He will never give up on you. He is chasing you. He is relentless. I remember um, when God began to move in my life, I began to see God license plates and God stickers. And I'd turn on the TV on Sunday to watch football and I'd see, you know, 
Christian services. And then God starts, sent two Marines to knock on my door and share the gospel. And then two friends at UH share the gospel. And it was like, when God begins to move on your life, he's, he's after you because he wants to put you on that pathway to his plan. And then when you're on that plan, you're going to experience peace, purpose, and you're going to impact other people's lives. And that is the highest degree of fulfillment is when your life is being given for the betterment of other people. And, and so I just want to encourage you. Um, and so I just got, have some phrases here. He can turn your pain into purpose, your heartache into healing, and your guilt into good. Let me repeat that. He can turn your pain into purpose, your heartache into healing, and your guilt into good. And he did that with me. Even though I aborted a baby, God has graciously molded me into a spiritual father that cares for spiritual babies today. Okay? Um, even though I looked at porn, I looked at evil, God has taught me today as a spiritual dad to look at the good in people, to see their potential no matter where they are, and to call that diamond in the rough out. I don't see people, when they're struggling with stuff, I don't see their junk. I see the good, and I begin to speak to that good no matter where they're at, no matter how deeply affected they are by or how deep they're in bondage, I call them out to God's, to God's heart for them. And so, um, you know, uh, my eyes were full of lust, but now they're full of compassion for others to see their destiny and purpose. And so what God means, um, the enemy means for evil in your life, God means it for good. Can I sit here? Amen for that, even though I can't hear you. <laughs> um, so I'd like to invite you right now to trade your shame and torment for peace of mind you know? and a future filled with purpose. And some of you may be grandparents tonight or moms or dads and you're concerned about your adult child or teenager and you're wondering what do I do and how can I help them turn their lives around. Um, you know, the clear path to a new life in Christ is confession. It's confession. Confession just means to agree with God where you're at, and then God can begin to do his mighty work in your life. Uh, repentance is to rethink, and to renounce means to break free the legal ties that you've given the enemy. And, and when you confess, and you repent, and you renounce, um, you can also do the hardest thing of all, and that's what I have to do, and that's to forgive yourself. That is the hardest step to take. Uh, I had to forgive myself of all these uh, terrible things that I did. So what I'd like to do right now is I'd like everyone to bow their heads that are on tonight. And I'd like to um, lead you in a prayer to confess, repent, renounce, and forgive yourself. And then I'd also like to just speak a quick prayer to retrieve any scattered parts that you might have. You know, I, I, I refer to the Iron Man uh, syndrome, not syndrome, but the Iron Man phenomena. We have prayed for so many people's parts to return from these bad places. I mean, this is different than severing soul ties. Okay, so I think this is a new revelation maybe for some of you. So we've been praying to retrieve people's scattered parts by asking the Lion of Judah to roar and to dislodge their parts stuck in the ungodly way. And you know what people say to us all the time? One guy said to us, or several people said to me, I feel like I'm Iron Man. You know when, the, when he calls his body suit and all the different parts start coming back all over? He goes, oh, I feel all these things coming back to me. And I go, yeah, your parts are coming back to you. A pastor's wife that we prayed for a couple of years ago, she said, I see this jigsaw puzzle and it's like there's not much to it and all the pieces are coming back. See, because God's heart for you is for you to be at peace, for all your pieces to come back to you so that you're at peace, you're whole right? That's what shalom means in Hebrew. It means wholeness or completion, to be at peace, for your pieces to return. So when you pray for the peace of Jerusalem, you're praying for all the Jewish and Arab parts, the brothers, to come together into one, to become the one new man. So God wants that. He wants to bring our scattered parts back to us. So I want to pray that prayer for you tonight. Are you guys open, open to that as we close? Okay, great. So um, if you could bow your heads, or it doesn't matter. We don't have to be religious. You can keep your eyes open if you want to. But Father, I pray right now that 
if anyone online this evening, if you have an issue that you're dealing with, if you're watching or viewing pornography on your iPhone or your, your Samsung phone or on your laptop, and you have been desperately trying to break free, but you have not been able to break free, your first step back towards your purpose and destiny, your first step to getting cleaned up is to say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I have sinned by doing such and such. Would you do that under your breath right now? Would you just tell the Lord that you're sorry, that you'd like to change your mind, you'd like to repent, you'd like to turn your life and go in the opposite direction that you're presently going. Would you do that right now under your breath? And would you tell the Lord, Lord Jesus, I break every legal tie, every connection, to pornography, or Lord, I've been victimized by someone and I'd like to break ties with that individual. Would you just renounce the legal rights that you gave the enemy or the enemy has on you right now and say, I break, I shatter, I destroy, I dissolve these ties to my soul. Lord, begin the process, the journey back to wholeness and my purpose and my destiny. And then would you also say silently to the Lord right now, Lord Jesus, I forgive myself. Remove my shame. I am so thankful, Lord, that when you hung on the cross, you willingly allowed yourself to be crucified completely nude and naked. You were literally shamed to remove my shame. You took away my shame by being shamed by the Roman guards. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that I need not be ashamed. I need not feel guilty any longer. I ask you, Lord, to break me free to set me free from the stronghold of pornography. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, with your eyes still closed, I want to pray another prayer about any scattered parts that you might have. And one of the ways that you know that you have scattered parts is sometimes you feel like you're here, but you're not here. Sometimes you feel like, you know, there's a part of me somewhere else, or there's a part of me that's still with that girl. I can't get over that guy. I, I just can't get them out of my head. That's because there's a part of them that's with you. And so, Lord, I ask you to sever every soul tie, that, er that every part of whoever's praying this prayer tonight is still remains in other partners or connected to the realm of pornography, that, Lord, you'd bring their parts back to them and vice versa and break the ties. But, Lord Jesus, I also pray that as the Lion of Judah, you would roar right that the sound and frequency and vibration of your mighty voice would ripple through the heavenly places right now to where any person who's watching tonight or listening tonight, if they have any part of them entrapped in the ungodly length where they're lonely and afraid and they feel dry, Lord, would you loosen them from that place of entrapment? And Lord, would you send Elijah's chariot of fire right now to ripple through the heavenly places and pick up those parts that now have been disengaged and then return them. Just like by centripetal force, Lord, would you just return them to each person tonight and make them whole. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Okay, well. It is 7.45. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> oh, thank you Any so questions? much. Pastor Rob, thank you so much for sharing so vulnerably 
and courageously. And I can just tell by the way you shared that God has really freed you. I could just see the just that peace and that joy and that compassion that you you just imparted. You know, I just thank you, Jesus, for all that God has done in your life. And praise God. He pursued praise you. I'm so I'm so grateful to the Lord for all of that. Um, we know we have a question here. I think this is how which what this person means is what would you say to parents who are ashamed of their sexual past and uh, I think they're they mean they're he hesitant to share it with their kids or teenagers uh, would you recommend sharing it or what are the benefits or uh, any benefits in sharing your sexual past with your kids I mean I'm sure there's age appropriateness yeah. just right yeah. can you so one of the consequences I didn't have time to um share tonight, I mean, I try to keep it to three, was that each of my boys got hooked into pornography. Okay. So when you read the Ten Commandments, it says the sins of the fathers. Now, they're fathers on both the mother's and father's side. Right? So both sides of the family are affected by the sins of the fathers. And so because I opened the door to pornography, it passed on to my sons. And, you know, my oldest son, he was just hanging out with his friends and they start, they decide, it wasn't his choice. They decided to flip something on the television set. And that's how he got hooked. But because I had shared with him my story, he knew that it was safe for him to come to me and tell me what happened to him. And uh, he came and he told me about it. I did not explode. I did not read him the riot act. I told him I loved him. I prayed for him and he got free right away. And it hasn't been an issue for him. So my second son, it's been more of an issue. But you know, um, with all three of my sons, because of God's grace on my life, and because I was willing to share with them, he would give me dreams when they started to dabble. And so I was able to cut it off at the past. I was able to go and say to them, hey, you know, something going on. This It can't be true. You know, I'm, I just dreamed this. And maybe God's telling me to pray this so that this doesn't happen to you. Has, has this happened to you? You know, so I think uh, a parent sharing with their child what they've gone through will actually set their children free. You know, open the door for open and honest conversations. I don't think you're really protecting your children when you hide it. You're actually hurting them. Because the enemy has that hold, still has that home, hold of shame on you, and you're passing shame to them, and you're keeping something secret. Because it says in um, Proverbs 20, 13, um, don't, you know, like if this is a cup, confess your sins to one another. So, you know, bring it out in the open and then bring it into the light, and then there'll be no hold on you anymore. So, I, I really advocate parents sharing. Um, in terms of resources, there are a lot of deliverance ministries on the island. Um, there's a lot of books that a parent could read. Um, you could call us if you wanted if you wanted help, you know, parental help in that area. But I think it's a good thing. Some people may differ, but I, as a parent, it really worked for us. What when did you? What what age did you tell your your boys? You know about your sexual past or did you, on your, what about the abortion too in your life? Did you share that too, Rob? Or um, is there yeah. a timing, is a Holy Spirit led, I know, but yeah. yeah. I shared that uh, the first time I think they heard that was in a, in a message to the entire congregation. Mm. So they may have been shocked. Um, it just, it didn't occur to me to share it. Um, but probably between ages, between 15 and 20, somewhere in there, you know, when they were starting to come into that time in their lives when, you know, that's a lure. I'm just grateful. I got dreams from God. He really protected them by notifying me. Yeah. So I say adolescence is a good time to bring it up. I mean, that's how it worked for us. That doesn't mean you can't start earlier. Yeah. But I think, you know, the, the main thing to communicate to your kids is, if this is going to happen to you, I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to shame you or get on you. I'm here to help you. And I, I was just thinking too, in addition to what you shared, uh, Pastor Rob, like if, if a parent 
still hasn't dealt with their shame yet at all, um, that's a good motivation to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, be free or just pursue your healing journey. Um, and, and the God, I believe the Holy Spirit will guide you in the timing and the, you know, mm -hmm. share with your, your child, you know, your journey and, and what God has done in your life to, to help you. The hope, yeah. I agree. Um, is, if someone is struggling with porn and hasn't talked to anyone yet, what are the first steps? That's one another question people someone have. That's a that's a great question. I think that um, whew, when you're struggling with porn, um, everything inside of you tells you hide it at all. You know, to go to every length that you can to make sure no one knows. Um, mm -hmm. You have to you have to confide in someone you really trust mm -hmm. that you know is not gonna smash you when you reveal it. So if that person is there, maybe you can go to a pastor um, or a small group leader, someone that you really know will keep confidence. Um, one of the first things I did when I, I got uh, saved or I came to Christ is I took my large tall pile of porn and I put it in a garbage bag. My mom didn't even know I had it under my bed. Good thing my mom didn't clean under my bed. <laughs> but I put it in a garbage bag and I threw it in the, you know, you gotta, you gotta um, get rid of it, you know. And the hard thing for this generation is this thing. Mm -hmm. Porn is so easily accessible. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, there's confession, that's the first step. Another step is gonna be like, how do you, how do you get a handle on easy access? And so maybe it's um, when you get, brave enough or confident enough or trusting enough, you let someone you really trust, you give them permission, and I really stress that word permission, to hold you accountable. And so though someone who's holding you accountable, that's not a free pass to whack you over the head. It's a free pass based on being given the permission to ask you the tough questions that you want the person to ask you. You know, how's it going with, with your struggle? How are you doing? What can I be praying for you? you know, things like that. So I think the first step is to find someone you trust. And then when you feel confident enough to give them permission to ask you the hard questions that are going to keep you on track. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And I was just thinking that, you know, we, um, we have a resource that can, I, at least I think we can give as a free resource for tonight, um, that uh, PDF we have on porn you know, just some tips and some steps that can just elaborate more, um, more upon and build upon what Pastor Rob just shared. So that could be a, a, a good resource that all of you will get. Uh, that yeah. will help yes. you. Can I get a copy of that? <laughs> oh yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I think that that's always helpful, you know, to have more ideas and, and tips and things that you can pray about doing. Um, it's a battle. Yeah, it is a battle. It's a battle. Um, one other question is, how do we break, I think this, this person is referring to the generational uh, patterns that, you know, you might see in your home, in your family, like maybe your, you, your parents watched porn, and maybe they, they were not even Christians, or maybe your parents didn't even think it was anything wrong with it, um, and, you know, you were exposed as a child, like, how, do you, how would you navigate not wanting to pass that on to your own children, or, you know, that generational pattern oh, what, okay, what so that? that's another great question are you asking that question michelle or someone um... someone else is okay yeah all right so i i'm not trying to like uh, blow our horn you know but healing healing hearts changing lives is the name of our ministry and healing hearts changing lives is an elijah ministry right so when you look at the ministry of elijah he was calling the people of god back out of baal worship and Asherah worship, which were very sexually explosive spiritual entities that had taken Israel into deep, deep darkness. So much so that God stopped the rain for three and a half years. Jezebel was the person. This, you can go to 1 Kings 17, 18, and 19 to see all of this. And so Elijah was calling the people of God back to devotion to God. And the reason why we're Elijah ministry 
And the reason why Elijah was, called, you know, he, he was sent by God to break the people free of sexual issues. Because when you, when you sin sexually, your heart or part of you is connected to other gods. Go to uh, Numbers chapter 25. It's the first mention of Baal worship. And 24,000 Israelite men were seduced by the women of Midian or Moab to have sex with them. And when they had sex with them before the altar of Baal, their heart was now with Baal, not with God. And that's what Elijah ministry does is it's, it's breaking the connection, the sexual connection, so that your heart can be fully invested and devoted to Father God. Right? So Healing Hearts Changing Lives is a ministry that does that. We pray for three generations, for your grandparents, for your parents, no, excuse me, your parents, you, and your children, right? And our other ministry is Finding Freedom that's done by Pastor Jason. That takes care of the first generation. That's you. Our ministry takes care of you, your parents, and your children. And so during our ministry time, we fill out a seven-page questionnaire. And a lot of the questions have to do with the area of sexuality and also abortion. Because Elijah also dealt with Molech worship. Molech comes from the Hebrew word Melech, which means king of the underworld, and babies were sacrificed to Molech, and that's the ancient equivalent of modern abortion. So Elijah was calling the people of God back out of these terrible strongholds to devotion to God. So, uh, you know, we have Healing Hearts resources that we could link you to if you're interested uh, to help you and your family break free we just prayed for 30 people on a big island and many of them had these these two issues okay. so that 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 would be my um immediate answer yeah. i don't know if that answers the question no that was so good and you know there's it, it's there's so much only so much we, we can cover in one hour here you know and <laughs> um there's so much so much more depth and i always want to say that I, i've gone through healing hearts and it's i've had so much breakthrough um, in my life and thank you rob for and barbara for all that you do so yeah i highly recommend it to to check it out um you know we're we're kind of narrowing uh landing the plane almost eight o'clock pastor rob i would love if you would just pray a blessing mm. over all of us that are are tuned in tonight um whatever's on your heart as the holy spirit leads you that's a wonderful way. I, I wanted to do that. So thank you. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to hold out my hands over you right now or toward you. May the Lord bless you, which literally means in the Hebrew language, may he kneel before you and present you with the gifts you need for your journey ahead. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you, which literally means in the Hebrew May the Lord weave together all these wooden thorn bushes that were used by shepherds to protect their flock from, from the wolves and other predators. So may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord shine his face upon you, which literally means in the Hebrew, may he extend to you the wholeness of who he is so that you can become all that he has destined you to become. And may the Lord grant you peace. May you be like Sarah and Rebecca and Leah and, Leah and Rachel and Ruth and Esther and Lois, if you're women. And may you receive the double portion blessing of Ephraim and Manasseh, if you're, if you're guys. May the Lord just bless your socks off tonight as you move toward greater relationship with the Father and greater impact that the Lord has destined you for. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Pastor Rob. You know, uh, you carry the Father's heart so beautifully and brilliantly. And um, just a little tidbit about you, Pastor Rob, is that you are part Jewish too, right? Uh, that's your heritage. And that's the just so beautiful that you come from that lineage and, you know, able to bring a little bit of that Jewish background, you know, to your prayer and, um, it's just so beautiful and that i think that the, you know the, the the revelation of this the blessing of the father you know so thank you for that thank you for that appreciate well, having you on having me on tonight i mean 
Yes, thank you for sharing your story with us. Um, I think may the Lord just help us to just meditate, you know, on the many things that you shared tonight and highlight things as he wants us to, to speak to our hearts. So thank you so much. You're welcome so much. And may you all uh, have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you so much.